After training with a three or four day workout split for one to two years consistently, you may have hit yet another frustrating plateau. You put on a bit of muscle and lost some belly fat, but there's a lot more to be desired. And of course, those sweet days of newbie gains in which you add 10 pounds to the bar every week and rapidly see changes in the mirror are long gone. Fortunately, there's a simple way to get through this roadblock, and that's by increasing training volume and incorporating advanced forms of periodization. Do this wrong, however, and you'll be putting yourself at risk of under-recovery, rendering all your hard work useless. In this video, I'm gonna break down the best five-day split for muscle growth and share a foolproof template that you can follow. By the end of this video, you'll have a proven, science-based routine you can start doing today to bust through frustrating plateaus and gain muscle fast without mindlessly doing extra work with no gains to show for it. First, let's discuss what needs to change as you become more advanced. A three to four day workout split may be great at first, but if you wanna continue gaining muscle, your workout volume needs to increase over time. Just take a look at this graph from the muscle and strength pyramids. According to research, there's a dose-response relationship between volume and muscle hypertrophy. In other words, the more work you perform in the gym, the more muscle you'll build, at least to a degree. You see, there will be a point of diminishing returns, and even worse, a point at which you'll start to regress. That's because there's an interplay between two things, volume and fatigue. As you perform more volume, fatigue also increases. If the time you spend away from the gym doesn't wipe out your fatigue in order to allow a full recovery, you'll only wear your body down further. According to the fitness fatigue model, the higher your fatigue gets, the worse your performance becomes. Thus, your fitness, which is basically your progress, decreases. I carefully designed this workout split to increase your training volume, while also optimizing recovery, so you manage your fatigue and experience smooth and steady progress. So now the question becomes, what workout split will we be following five days a week? For maximum results, I recommend the upper-lower push-pull legs routine. This workout split will look something like this. As you can see, the upper and lower body training serve as strength days. We'll focus more on lower volume and heavier weight. Of course, this style of training will build muscle, but more importantly, it'll help you get stronger and increase training volume. The push-pull leg days will split your muscles into the pushing muscles, chest, shoulders, and triceps, the pulling muscles, back, biceps, and rear delts, and the legs or lower body, quads, hamstrings, and glutes. These days will focus more on hypertrophy, so you'll be training in the 8 to 15 rep range, using moderate loads. That means more volume and also more metabolic stress. As I've discussed in other videos, that means more of a pump, a mechanism through which our muscles grow. This split also allows you to hit every muscle two times per week, which according to Dr. Brad Schoenfeld's research, is necessary for optimal results. You may have also noticed lower body days have been split between quad-focused and hamstring-focused. The reason is simple, upper body muscles are already split into push and pull days, but the lower body days both include all lower body muscles. By prioritizing different muscles and distributing volume differently, it allows us to manage fatigue. Now that you understand why this program works, let's jump into the actual workout. I've included only the first two primary exercises, allowing you to fill in the rest of the specifics according to your personal goals and needs. Based on hypertrophy expert advice from Schoenfeld, Ogborn, and Krieger, I recommend you distribute 10 to 20 sets per muscle per week across your exercises. The specifics depend on individual factors, but even then, they will still need to change over time. Day one, upper body, strength. For this workout, you'll alternate between pushing and pulling exercises to allow the opposing muscle group to recover. A vertical press is any exercise where you're pressing the weight over your head, think shoulder press, while a vertical pull is any exercise where you're pulling the weight down toward your body. For strength days like these, we'll focus on heavier loads where we train in the lower rep ranges, such as 5x5, 4x6, or 4x7, especially for the first two exercises. Day two, lower body, strength, quad focus. Because it's a strength day, we'll be performing fewer total exercises. We should also be compensating for the lower reps by prescribing a higher number of sets. And as a quad focused day, we prioritize the quad exercises by placing them at the beginning of the workout and performing more total volume than the hip hinge, which hits more of the hamstrings and glutes. Day three, push, hypertrophy. For our hypertrophy days, we'll likely be doing something like three or four sets per exercise with anywhere from eight to 15 reps per set. If you noticed, I started this workout with an inclined barbell bench press because the previous time you hit your chest in this split, it was with a flat bench press. That said, feel free to begin the workout with a horizontal press of your choice. Day four, pull, hypertrophy. If you can't perform a minimum of eight pull-ups, feel free to substitute them with an assisted variation or simply perform a vertical pull, like the lat pull-down instead. 
As you can see, our pull workout will consist of more horizontal pulls and far less vertical pulling exercises. The reason for this is simple. Contrary to popular belief, horizontal pulls like barbell rows hit the lats almost as well as vertical pulls like pull-ups and lat pull-downs. Not only that, but they also have the extra benefit of hitting your highly neglected upper back muscles. Day 5, Legs. Hypertrophy. Hamstring focus. For the fifth day of the split, let's walk through it step by step so you get a better idea of how the workout will go. Exercise number one, deadlift, four by six. Although this is technically a hypertrophy day, the deadlift is an exercise you don't wanna perform for more than eight reps in a single set. That's because it's very likely for muscles in your back to fatigue, increasing the risk of injury. Exercise number two, walking lunges with long strides, four by 10. By taking long strides, you limit knee travel and focus more on the range of motion of the hips, which means you'll feel a major stretch in the glutes and hamstrings. While we could go with a squat variation, we're doing a lunge exercise because one, the squat is extremely fatiguing, especially when done after the deadlift, and two, single leg variations like the rear foot elevated split squat have been shown to be as effective as squats for strength and athletic performance. Exercise number three, leg curl, three by 12. The hamstrings are notorious for having a relatively low max recoverable volume, MRV. That means that most guys can't recover from too much training. One reason is that doing deadlifts and Romanian deadlifts, for example, cause a significant stretch of the hamstrings under load, which means a lot of muscle damage. After heavy movements like deadlifts in this workout, it makes sense to use a less fatiguing exercise while still adding some hamstring volume. A leg curl variation is perfect. And according to research, this exercise activates your hamstrings far more than any other leg movements, including the squat. Exercise number four, hack squat, three by 12. Hack squats are basically a feet forward squat. They allow you to hit the quads with a squat variant without the low back fatigue. Surprisingly, EMG research showed that hack squats hit the quads better than other quad dominant exercises, including the squat. Exercise number five, standing calf raises, four by 15. The calves are composed of two major muscle groups, the gastrocnemius and the soleus. Since the gastrocnemius crosses the ankle and the knee, it gets stretched when your knee is bent, which puts you in a state of active insufficiency. That's why the soleus takes over when doing seated calf raises. In other words, if you want to build bigger calves, focus on standing calf variations where your legs are straight. And last but not least, no workout is complete without progression. For this workout, we have two progression schemes we'll use. Scheme one, linear periodization. For the primary exercises in each workout, we'll use linear periodization. This involves adding weight each week, but also removing one rep. The purpose of dropping one rep is basically to leave room to lift heavier and push for strength gains. After a four week block, you can restart the rep scheme, this time, however, with a slightly heavier load. Scheme number two, double progression. The second progression scheme is for all secondary exercises. The way it works is quite simple. If the workout prescribes a rep range of eight to 10, your goal is to complete each set for 10 reps. In other words, the only time you'll increase the weight is once you're able to complete each set for the maximum number of reps. So there you have it, the best five day split for muscle growth. Just remember you'll need to tailor the volume to fit your needs. So start on the low end and work your way up from there. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. Also, if your training and nutrition are in order and you're looking for a bit of an edge, be sure to check out my science-based supplement line. Each product was created using scientifically proven ingredients, all clinically dosed and guaranteed to produce results. And right now, you can get 25% off your entire order, plus free shipping by using coupon code MONSTER at checkout. So head over to musclemonsters.com supplements or click the link in the description. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.